coming up next on Button to Christ Ministries. You see, he said, Babylon is falling. And he didn't stop there. He said, it's falling. He showed the urgency that it's tumbling down. It's end time. God is calling his people now. What are God people doing? What are you doing? Are you going to stay and be part of the system and don't get ready? Stay tuned. I just want to say welcome to all those who are watching, all those who have called in, all those who journeyed down here, like our friend Precious Metal, I call her. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Everyone who journeyed to be with us, you know, as we fellowship together, just want to welcome you on the prayer line, those who are calling from different countries. I heard Sister Corrine from... UK, I heard others testifying. I know Brother Royce is on, our dear friend from Portugal. A lot of people on because we want to fellowship. People are calling in from Jamaica, from different islands. As we fellowship together, I know you are sending out the link, Button to Christ, um, um, Facebook. People are joining as we share together. And tonight, the Lord has given me a word tonight, and I know, make sure you have your pens and your paper ready. God is awesome. He's a good God, and I know he's going to share with us, and he's going to teach us, and he's going to show us. Amen? So, last week, the Lord led us to the three angels' messages. And as I said before, if you go online, I did the three angel messages before. I think it's called Angel with a Message, you know? And it was very powerful as we went through and we broke down the three angels' messages. Well, God want this to be part one, part two, and part three. And we read in Revelation 14, starting at verse 6, about the first angel. And the first angel was very powerful because he spoke about, you know, fear God and give glory to him and obedience. And, you know, the whole aim is that we have to keep the commandments of God. We have to fear God. We have to respect him. I want to let you know that the second angel message is related to the first. Because if you don't obey the first angel message, you ain't even going to get to the second angel. Because first we have to fear God, we have to worship him, we have to be obedient, and, and we got to step out in the will of God. Well, I'm going to open with a prayer, and then I'm going to go to Revelation 14. And we're going to learn some things again slowly as we go through. And I know you're praying for me. The Lord is hiding me beneath the cross. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we are so grateful tonight. You are here. We thank you for all the viewers around the world. We thank you, Lord, as we fellowship. Because this is an end time message. When the angels, the three angels, are going forth with the loud cry, shouting and telling this urgency that we should fear God and worship him and respect in him. We just want to thank you now as you hide me beneath the cross. Let your name alone be glorified. We thank you for hearing, for answering, for blessing. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Praise God, praise God. So we're going to go right into it. So Revelation 14 verse 6 and it says and I saw another angel in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation kindred and tongue and people they have a gospel a message to give and I want you to relate it to us that we have a message to give. 
and you can't sleep on these messages that God wants to give to his people. And they're saying with a loud voice in verse 7, Fear God, give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment, mercy, is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. I want to tell you that in the third angel's message, we'll be talking more about the Sabbath. I want to tell you, it says, give glory to the Lord that made heaven and earth. He's the creative power. He's the God who spake and things come into being. He could have made heaven and earth in one day, but he made it in six days, and then he rested on the Sabbath. That's why it says the creative God, the power. He said, come and worship him that made heaven and earth. The devil don't deserve that worship. That's why there's a great controversy, you see. Because he's saying, come and worship him that made heaven and earth, the creative power. No wonder the devil comes, comes with a counterfeit, which we're going to be talking about next week. The sun they worship, the sun God, the papacy movement, where it comes from. How does this worship? you got to understand that anything the Lord does, the devil tries to match it, counterfeit, to try to do the same thing to, con to confuse the brethren. So we're going to go to see what the, the angel says. The angel in Revelation 14 verse 8, and it says, And there followed an angel, another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. I want you to really note, because a lot of people get confused when you talk about Babylon and all these things. I want to let you know that Babylon is a system. I remember growing up back home when the dreadlocks always called the police officers Babylon. And they say, Babylon is coming. You know what I mean? Babylon, you know? They relate that, Babylon, and that stayed with me. Anytime you heard they say, Babylon is coming, you know it's police. <laughs> it's a system. So therefore, Babylon is a system. Even though we have the old Babylon, which we're going to talk about, and Babylon, we are living in Babylon right now. And the call is saying, Babylon is falling, is falling. It meant that there's an urgency that Babylon is falling. There's an urgency that something is about to happen. We are living in Babylon. And the call is saying, come out of her, my people. Get out of the system before it crashes. We got to get it. He's calling us to get out. So we want to look at the, the old system, the Babylon that was before. The Babylon that was in ancient time. I want you to look with me to Genesis 11, verse 1 to 4. Genesis, go back to the book of the, the first book, and I want you to write it down. Write it also so you can go home and study it. Genesis chapter, what did I say, 11? 1 to 4, and hear what it says. And it says, and the whole earth was one language, and of one speech. That's way back then, listen. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwell there. And they said one to another, Go to let us make bricks, and burnt them thoroughly. And they had brick for one for stone, and slime, slime had they for Martha. That's the limestone. And they said, go to let 
us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. You know the story. So hear what is happening here. That's the Tower of Babel. Way back. So you see, Babylon means confusion. And this city right now is confused when you look on the news and see what's going on around the world. We are living in Babylon. But God is comparing. God is so powerful that he gave us the examples. That Babylon was a place of confusion. Where the men thought they don't want to see, they're not going to be, be exposed to flooding any longer. So what they're going to do is build a tower. So they get the mortar and they get the limestone, everything, and they start to build. And they say, we're going to build it so high that if there's a flood, that's how men think. They think God don't have the, the, the real power, you know what I'm saying? And they start to build. And what did the Lord did? He came down. You can read it. And he confused them. And when they were confused, as it says, somebody will ask for a tool and they will get something else. They couldn't understand each other any longer. God stopped the work of the devil because the devil wants to counteract and to challenge God. And the God we serve is so powerful. Who can, try, can test him? Who can test him? So here it is now. Babylon was a place of confusion from day one. And the devil is using the same plight, the same system to get to God's people. So, as I said before, the first angel message is linked to the second angel's message where God wants us to keep his commandment, to give glory to God, to worship. It's all going to be about worship. If you notice, he spoke about the sea and the land and what he has done. So the end game is all going to be about worship. Who has the power? Which day do you worship? Whom do you worship? Who is Babylon? What is Babylon? Listen, it's getting really powerful. God is calling his people because, you see, if we accept the first angel message to fear God, then we will accept the second angel's message. If we reject God in the first angel, we will reject the second message also. God wants to do something and to show us something that is really powerful. Let us talk about Babylon. You see, the thing is that if you want to know, we have to know more about Babylon. We know that it's a city of confusion. What does the scripture said about Babylon? You see, Babylon is a system, and this system consists of three powers. And I'm going to show you in the Bible. Three powers this system consists of. We have the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. I want you to turn with me to Revelation 13. Revelation 13. So go back to Revelation 13. Have your Bibles, because we're going to really... Revelation 13. Sorry, 16 verse 13, my bad. 16 verse 13. And it says, And I saw... Three unclean spirits, like, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophets. So therefore, we're talking about the Babylonian system and how it consists of three powers. And you can find these three powers in different forms right through Revelation. I want to stay on course here. So right now you have a dragon here, you have a beast, and you have a false prophet. Okay, look down to verse 19 in the same chapter. And it says, And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nation fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness 
of his wrath. Again, it shows you that the city, after it was destroyed, that it was divided into three parts. Again, I want you to stay with me because it's a little bit complicated. But I want to talk about the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, the tree. But do you notice how, what Satan does? You have the God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Satan is trying something here. You have the dragon, you have the beast, and you have the false prophet. Let's look at Revelation 12, verse 9. Go back to Revelation 12, verse 9, and I want you to make sure you underline and write these things down so you can go home and you can study it. Verse 9, and it says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Who is the dragon then? The devil. So there again, that's part of the Babylonian system, the system that goes against God, the system that goes against the true worship of God, the system, I'm telling you, Look at Revelation 13, verse 1. Go to the next chapter. Revelation 13, verse 1. And it says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Against God. That's a beast. And the beast power is the papacy movement power, which we will talk about in part three. You can study it. It's very powerful. The devil comes with three powers. And then you can look at the false prophet. It's the false prophet mentioned in several scriptures. Let's look at Matthew 24, verse 24. Matthew 24 Verse 24, God is showing us something over and over here. And it says, For there shall arise false Christ, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. It's showing you that there's perilous time coming. It happened then, and it's going to happen again. The Lord is giving the loud cry to say, Babylon is falling, is falling. It's an emergency. It's saying that the system that is corrupt, if we don't get out of the system and worship the true God, according to the first angel, fear God. If we don't fear God and worship him and give glory to him, we're going to be part of the system. We have to be separate. We have to be different. We can't be like the, the, the world system. That's why God is calling us to be remnant after remnant. How do you think that's going to happen? It's so deep. So the Lord is saying, listen, there's three powers here. Satan controls these powers. But God is so powerful. You see, when the Advent believers were expelled from the established church in 1800s, if you know about the history of the church, this was the great disappointment. And the birth of the Adventism, they came to believe that because the church is confused or refused to accept God's warning, they have fallen under the eyes of God. They were thinking that way back then, but the Advent movement were established. Some of us know. They associate this fall with the fall of Babylon. The second angel's message in Revelation 14.8. And the second angel message, we're going to break it down a little bit. And again it says, and another angel followed Followed. And as I mentioned in the first angel, that there's always another angel. So there was one before. 
So another angel followed because God wants to warn his people that the day is coming when it's all going to be about worship. Who you worship? What day do you worship? And it's say, saying Babylon is falling, is falling. That great city, because she has made all nation drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So you talk about drunkenness, wine, talk about adulterous life, fornication. You talk about the evil that was happening in Babylon, that is happening here now. And God is saying we need to come out of her. God is saying it's time for God's people to recognize. Ancient Babylon was opposed to Israel and to Jerusalem. Paganism and idolatry was wide. Babylon eventually took the whole nation of Israel captive. And only a small remnant returned to build the ancient ruins. God pronounced judgment on ancient Babylon. He's pronouncing judgment now. I want you to go with me to Jeremiah. Go to Jeremiah 51. God is going to show us some powerful things tonight before we wrap up. Go to Jeremiah, and we need to go home and read these things. Jeremiah 51. You see, God already showed these things in the prophecies. When we studied the prophecies, he already showed us. So Jeremiah 51, verse 7 to 9, and it says, Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nation have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nation are mad. Is the society mad today? Hello, somebody. Look on what's going on around the world. The killing, the adulterous life, the evil, the witchcraft. Is there anything that the Lord want to see before he comes? Look at verse 8. Babylon is the... Is, 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 Suddenly fallen and destroy. Howl. He's saying, cry out for her. Take balm for her pain. If so, be she made, may be whole. Cry out for the people who live in Babylon right now. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. We can't heal this world. We can't help everybody. When you look around and see what's going on, she's not healed. Forsake her. Let us go, everyone, into his own country. For her judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. Mercy. Judgment is coming. The Lord is saying the evil of Babylon is right before his eyes. The Lord is saying things are different now. His people need to turn and come to know him before it's too late. God is saying we need to turn. In similar fashion, end time Babylon, the confederation of religious powers that we've seen in Revelation 16, 13 and 14, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, that opposes God at the end of time will lead people astray. Many people will be taken captive. There's going to be numerous false doctrines that are going to arise. Those frogs, those three power is still available. Remember, Satan was kicked out of heaven with one third of the angels. Where do you think they are? Down here. And he said he's the dragon. He's given power to the beast. They work together. He have a system. And it's the Babylon system. And it linked to the worship. It linked to the papacy movement. It linked to the Sabbath. The Lord is saying we need to get out of her. We need to read and study Revelation. We need to read and see where God is showing us that it's high time. God's people need to wake up. The same judgment is pronounced in Jeremiah that I just read, 51 verse 8. An ancient Babylon is given the end time Babylon. Revelation 
14, verse 8. And the same call given in Jeremiah. God is giving the same call to Jeremiah, to the second angel. He's telling his people, Babylon is falling, is falling. You see, he said, Babylon is falling. And he didn't stop there. He said, is falling. He showed the urgency that it's tumbling down. It's end time. God is calling his people now. What are God people doing? What are you doing? Are you going to stay and be part of the system and don't get ready? I want you to turn with me to Revelation chapter 18. God is going to lead us into some things here. Revelation chapter 18. God wants his people to get out, to see the urgency of Babylon, that things are changing, times are changing. Revelation 18 from 1 to 5. Hear what it says. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having a great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Just imagine with me as I'm reading this chapter. Just imagine the angel came down with light, with power. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is falling, is falling. And is become the habitation of devils and whole of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Lord of mercy. What other warning do we want? The Lord is saying, get out. You see, the, the revelation prophecies is powerful. God showed the great revelator that the angel came down again, different from the, the second angel message in Revelation 18. He came down and said, get out. Babylon is falling. You see, it's a reason why God asked me to share this. Because a lot of people in the church is still sleeping. And God is saying, listen, Babylon is falling. God is saying it's time to get out of false worship. It's time to worship the creative power. It's time to worship the God who sit high and look low. It's time to go to the great I am, to Jesus Christ. God is calling his people to true worship. Give glory. Fear God. Give glory to him. Stop from playing church. Babylon is falling. The world, he says, full of evil, demonic power is spreading around the world. The cage spirit. You have to remember again, the chapter I read in, in, in Genesis, the verses I read, where the dragon and the beast and the false prophet, they came out like frogs. They're down here to deceive people. No wonder you have so much witchcraft around the world. No wonder we tell you you can't just eat any and anywhere. Because evil abound. You have to be careful what you put in your body now. You can't trust nobody. You know, I shared a testimony about the young lady that was in a coma. The young lady is in a coma now for six weeks. No movement. We go to visit her and no breathing, no squeezing, nothing. They checked everything and can't find anything wrong with her. She's hooked up. She had to be fed by a, a tube in her throat. And we went there and we prayed. We prayed. And you know something? The doctor, a woman doctor, recognized it spiritual. And the doctor told the mom, we will make a place for you to pray for her privately. Get people that prays. I've never seen this. You know what the doctor did? The doctor cleared out a section of their computer room where all the doctors meet. And I went there and I went into their computer room where only doctors come in that section. They made a private place for this young lady. We prayed and anoint her. God is so powerful. You see, when God was answering Naaman's prayer and the prophet's prayer, he sent Naaman to dip seven times. You know, we have a part to play. You know, when we went there and prayed, God was appealing to our heart. 
And something was happening in the spiritual realm. And this Sabbath passed. I was at church when I received a call. Do you want to speak to her? She's talking. And I spoke to her. I said, I'm going to the hospital right now. I went there and she spoke. She looked at me. She smiled. She spoke. If you've seen this young lady before, she was dead pretty much. No movement for six weeks. She spoke and smiled. And she said, I know it's something. I had vision that there's witchcraft somebody sent at me. We assure her that she's going to come in this sanctuary to worship with us. We can't wait until she get out. She's going to come in this sanctuary to praise God. When we know that God, evil abound. And the Lord is saying we need to be wise in these last days. What we eat, what we do. God is calling his people. Babylon is falling. Who is Babylon again? Where is Babylon? If you want to come fear the ancient Babylon, but Babylon is here. The confusion spirit, the false worship, false doctrine, all different type of idolatry, all different type of sexual sin is happening in Babylon. And God is saying, get out of her. Get to my Sabbath. Get to the true worship. I got to read this again. I know I'm going to end soon. Listen, I got to read this again. I'm going back over Revelation 18. I'm reading right to verse 4 again. You have to get it, brethren. I don't want to break it down. You go home and do it. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven. God allowed the revelator to see these things. He was on an upward movement, seeing what is going to happen in our days, having a great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice. When you cry with a strong voice is when you see the urgency. If you're going to say, hey, come out of her and just speak soft. But if you say, come out of her, she's falling. The urgency alone, people are going to jump up and say, this angel had the urgency to God's people tonight to say, listen. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen. And is become the habitation of devils and the hall of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. The kings of the leaders accepting the papal, the false worship, the Babylonian system. He's saying the kings... And the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. All these things are going to go in fire. He said, don't watch the riches and wander after them. The Lord gave us the warning already that it's going to happen. The kings, everybody connect to the system. You know, today we were talking. And the guy showed me, um, the guy that owned... Um, what the, the company that delivers Amazon. And he worked like, I don't, anybody read it today. I don't remember if it's like 138 billion or something. And you know, he's separate from his wife and she's getting like 36 billion. So she's going to be the richest woman. And he gave in charity millions of dollars, billions. And I'm saying, look at us. We're going to get billion one day. Hello, Brother Shea. <laughs> no, serious. If we get one billion to run this ministry, we'll have offices all over the world. But praise God for Isaiah. He said in the last days he's going to take the riches from some of these evil people out there and he's going to bless his ministry. We're going to have hundreds of millions to have offices and send people paid all over the world to do powerful work because we are not part of the Babylon system. God is saying, don't watch their delicacies. And in verse 4 it says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come 
out of her, my people, that he be not partakers of her sins, that he receive not of her plagues. I want to tell you, these things are going to happen just before the seven plagues. The plagues are coming. Do you know what the plagues are? I know I did a study on it here already. You just don't remember. You need to go find it. The plagues are serious that is coming. And just before the Lord is calling, the angel is calling the people out of Babylon system, out of the false worship, because the plagues are coming. I read the last verse here. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. God is calling his people. The second angel announces the fall of Babylon. But the loud call to come out of her, my people, is made later. God's people are thus still in Babylon. It is Babylon's system of a religious structures aligned against God that is condemned. Not individually. It's the whole system. But if we don't careful, we will be a part of it. There are two calls out of Babylon. Just as Jesus began and ended his ministry on earth by cleansing the temple, so there are two calls to the churches at the end of time. The first of these calls was made at the beginning of the Advent movement around 1844 and was confirmed largely to America, whereas the final call will be worldwide and climax in the loud cry just prior to the close of probation. This experience will be accompanied by the outpouring of the latter rain. God is saying the power is coming. Is my people ready? It's a process. We cannot be, be, the Holy Spirit cannot pour out on us if we are part of the Babylonian system. Next week, I'm going to go deeper about the Sabbath and how the Sabbath is, is worshiping God, is part of worshiping the, the, the creative power. I'm going to talk about that. But God is calling you tonight as we close. He's saying you need to get out. You need to get out of the false worship. You need to get out of the Babylonian system. How are we going to get out? Some of us are emerged so deep. We are so into materialistic things. We are so into idolatry. We are so into different things of the world till we look the same. When God called us to be a, a peculiar people, when God called us and said we were just made a little bit lower than the angels, when the Lord says, I've crowned you with glory, God is saying, I've done so many things. I've showed you the way. And the Lord is asking you tonight, are you ready to come out of Babylon? Babylon is your lifestyle. Babylon is what you do in the dark, in the secrecy. It's not what you do public because a lot of people put masks on when we come to church. We're all dressed up and look good. But it's what you do behind the scene. Are you in Babylon still? Who are you worshiping? Are you keeping the Sabbath? Are you worshiping the papacy movement? What are you doing? The call is going out tonight loud and clear. Come out of her, my people. Babylon is falling. I showed you already in the scripture, Babylon is a confused city. It was then and it's still here, Babylon. We need to get out. How do we get out? We got to study the word. We got to be obedient to God. If you look back at the first angel's message, fear God, give glory to him, worship him. We need to worship God. We need to fear him. We need to come out of Babylon. I pray tonight, that our lives will be changed. I pray tonight that we will catch a glimpse of what the Lord wants us to do. When you look on suffering, when you look on the brokenness, I have been into so many homes and see brokenness. I say, Lord, have mercy. Mercy. Mercy, Lord. Please, I'm appealing. 
Don't be comfortable. If you're too comfortable, you're going to be swept away. You're going to end up on the other side and you're going to be confused and say, nobody told me. Well, the Lord is appealing to your heart right now. If you are in the sanctuary, if you are watching live, if you have called in the prayer line, the Lord is calling you to make a decision. You need to go home and study. These are prophetic things that is going to happen. These are prophecies. Revelation and Daniel is full of prophecies of what to come. Are you going to be found wanting? Are you going to be ready when Christ comes? Are you ready, brethren? I don't know about you, but I'm asking the Lord to, to help me that I'll be ready tonight. Not tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promise. This may be the last message you're listening here. We don't know. All we need to do is surrender and give everything over to Jesus. And if we surrender our all, he will come in, he will mold us, he will make us, he will replenish us, he will lift us up. If you want to be lifted up, could you stand to your feet as I pray? You want God to do something for you tonight. You don't want to be the same any longer. You want the Lord to do something. God is going to do something for you in the sanctuary. Somebody watching tonight from Australia, Brother Royce and your family. God is going to do something for you, my brother, in Portugal. God is going to do something for you, Sister Corinne, in the UK, who stayed up late. Somebody in Dubai that is watching. God is going to do something. The powerhouse God we serve. He said he will not give you more than you can bear. I know this morning I heard my sister cried out. I know she's here. She cried out this morning and said, Lord, help me. And tears were rolling down. It's very seldom because I've seen every pain. I've seen every cry. I've seen everything. And this morning, I was saying, God, how much are you going to give this woman? How much are you going to give my sister who been there, been through so much? I was asking God. I said, how much, Lord? And the thought is coming that he won't give us more than we can bear. Even though we think it's the end of the road, that's it. God is saying, I still can help you. There's still hope in Jesus. There's still hope. I'm going to pray tonight. You're standing here. You're standing, you're watching. I'm going to ask God to do a miracle. I'm going to ask God to provide for you, loose you, set you free. I'm going to ask the Spirit of God to come down in this place tonight. And to go right through the camera, go to, right through the telephone line. The powerful God we serve is able. He spake and everything come into being. He said, let there be light and there was light. He made everything. He placed the galaxies and all the firmaments. He's God. He knows everything. He caused the, the, the sea to come and stop and can't pass the bank of the river, the sea. Sure, God is so powerful. He's a God who knows everything. Tonight as we pray, this same God is able. Father in heaven, hallowed be thy righteous and thy powerful name. The name above all names. The names above all powers. Lord, your children is here tonight in your sanctuary. Your children is on the prior line, oh God, right across the U.S., all over, watching tonight who wants to come higher, oh God of glory. A lot of people are suffering, oh God, monetary. People are suffering, have no money to pay their mortgage. Some people have no money to pay their rent. Oh God of glory. Some people are physically sick, mentally sick, emotionally sick. 
You have a bomb in Gilead. Tonight, oh God, I'm asking you by means of your Holy Ghost power, condescend in this sanctuary. Condescend, oh God, to the cameras. Condescend to the phone lines and touch your people, oh God, and bring healing, bring restoration. Let the angel trouble the atmosphere. Let the angel trouble the air. Lord, I decree and declare it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth because you are the true God. You are the Jehovah Nisse. You are the Emmanuel God. El Shaddai. There's none like you under the sun. There's no other power like your power. Tonight, oh God, we invite you. Lord, we embrace you. We accept you. We surrender to you, oh God. May you break every chain. Allow your Holy Spirit to restore your people's mind. All those who are in the sanctuary, all those who are watching, those who are listening, let there be restoration. And I thank you, O oh God, I believe through the blood of Jesus Christ that it is done. Hallelujah, glory and honor. We thank you now for hearing, for blessing. In Jesus Christ's name, receive it. As you may be seated, receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it. I just want to say thanks again for watching. Thanks for the blessing. Thanks for praying for us. May God just continue to bless you and keep you. I am Patrick Baker from the Button to Christ Ministry. Until then, keep us in prayer. We love you and we will see you next week. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thanks for watching this program. We hope that you were blessed. To further your support with us, please consider giving a donation at buttontochrist.com or .org. Any amount is appreciated and will be used for the continued growth of our ministry and the spreading of the gospel to the world. May God richly bless you and we'll see you next time.